Each and every one of us have been bombarded by this greenhouse gas, climate change, eco-friendly, zero waste, organic produce, whatever it is. And I think for most people, we want to get into it, but where do we start? And so this video is a very easy way to just get started on living a more eco-friendly life in your kitchen. All right, so in this video, I just wanna dip our toes a little bit into the water of sustainable living, zero waste, whatever you wanna call it. This isn't gonna be a deep dive on any of these categories of composting or reuse, reduce, recycle, any of that stuff, but more videos on that to come. And if you're interested in that, go ahead and like this video, subscribe while you're down there, hit the bell so you're notified, and then you can continue to be encouraged on your sustainable lifestyle. Tip number one is composting. Now, a lot of people look at composting and they don't want the smell, they don't want the bugs, they don't want any of that stuff that people think happens with composting. But the reality is none of that's actually the case. There's actually a lot of pros, I would say, that are the opposite of those things. For instance, if you compost and have a nice little compost bin in your kitchen, all of your food scraps and everything are locked in this beautiful little bin that's got a charcoal filter to keep smell in, compostable bag so you don't even have to wash it out every time you change it, and it keeps your food scraps out of your trash can and out of the landfills, which is really important. But basically, your trash can is probably more susceptible to bugs and smell than your compost bin is. So your trash is gonna smell less bad and your compost isn't gonna smell at all. So I would say that's a win-win-win. Win. Someone else gets to win in that situation as well. So I keep my compost bin right next to the cutting board. That means anytime I'm cutting up any kind of vegetables or fruit or any plant material, I can just take the waste or the excess that I'm not using for cooking, drop it in the compost bin and we're good. Tip number two is recycle. Now, recycling has a lot of fuss and frustration around it right now. And unfortunately, it's well-deserved. But without getting into the crazy mess of recycling, let's just talk about the things that are easy to recycle, that are actually being recycled in the United States today. And we'll deal with the complex issue of recycling later. So there are three categories of recyclable things that make it really easy to understand what is definitely going to be recycled and all of the other stuff. So the three categories are this, plastics with the number one and two, cardboard and paper material that's not covered in waxy stuff, and then also aluminum cans. Now that can be cans of corn and beans and like produce like that, or it can just be your soda cans or LaCroix cans or whatever cans you have for drinks too. One of the best things you can do for recycling is just check and see what's available to you depending on where you live. Like. If you live in Seattle or Portland or New York City, there's a lot of really big compost and recyclable programs for where you can drop recycled goods pretty much anywhere and it's going to the right places, getting recycled and it's actually being processed appropriately. So if you live in a rural or suburban area, recycling may look just a little different for you, but that's okay, don't worry about it. It's really easy to figure it out. Most of the time you can just type into Google recycling near me and it'll tell you the best place to bring your recycled goods. You drop them off or you put them in their designated areas once you're at the recycle plant. It's really easy. And in some states you actually can make money turning in cans and bottles, which hey, why not get paid while doing a good thing? The important thing here is to just know what's available to be recycled for you. So if number three through seven plastics aren't recyclable for you, just try to reduce having those types of plastics when you're shopping and definitely don't put those in with the number one and two plastics or whatever plastics are available to you. Because if you mix it in, a lot of times what it can do is it can break the machines that are sorting the materials. It can ruin the material that's actually being recycled and then all of it ends up getting thrown into the landfill. And so just do your best to follow the rules. It's not too hard, it's not too crazy, and usually at recycle plants, you can just ask somebody and they're always happy to help. Tip number three is replace single-use things with reusable things. And this can actually save you a ton of money and can really be convenient and give you better food storage, it can give you better cleaning products, it can give you all kinds of things that are really just perks. And again, this is kind of the attitude that I wanted to start this video with is, we're just looking at our habits and we're seeing how we could improve them to take care of the planet to probably save us money 
and to just change our habits because habits don't necessarily have any value, it just the effects of our habits do. So here are a few ways that you will not only reduce waste, but it'll actually save you money in the long run. Paper towels. We use paper towels like crazy. We put them in the microwave, we use them to clean up messes and to dry off our hands. And then we frequently just crumple them up and throw them in the trash can. Fun fact, if you didn't have any chemicals on them, you can actually compost your paper towels, which is really, really nice because they're a good source of carbon. What I suggest rather than using paper towels like crazy is you can still use them for some things, but have reusable washcloths that you can have for cleaning up messes, wiping off your counters, drying off your hands and stuff like that. And just make sure you throw them in the laundry every once in a while, probably once a week and you'll be good to go. Plastic bags. You can easily replace this with just Tupperware bins that are definitely reusable. Honestly, they're better storage. They're more stackable in your fridge. They pack better into lunch boxes and stuff like that. And you can reuse them. You can put them in the microwave. There's a ton of reasons why you would want to do that. Did I mention that it will save you a ton of money not having to buy plastic bags all the time? Plastic grocery bags. Plastic grocery bags are everywhere. And I'm not just talking about in the stores, I'm talking about in your front yard, in your trees, in our rivers, in our forests, in our oceans. And we could talk all day about all of the negative things about plastic bags, like they're in the top five of the least recycled plastics, which is crazy. Um, but let's just talk about the pros because Normally when you have two things, you have a lesser thing and a better thing, you'll usually pick the better thing. Basically, this is one of those things that makes no sense to me why people use the gross bags that rip, that tear, that spill. Okay, I just needed to interrupt later while I'm editing this because I'm realizing how slightly condescending this might come across to some people. Just so you know, I do use plastic bags sometimes. They're not completely avoidable in today's world, but the thing is to just consider your habits, to consider using reusable bags as much as possible, especially for things that you do frequently, like grocery shopping and stuff like that. But basically the point of this is to, if you get grocery bags, plastic grocery bags, to make sure that you dispose of them properly, use them as a trash can liner in your bathrooms or something like that to where you can actually dispose of them and they don't end up just being loose bags that fly around and like you saw in a lot of the images before this, they end up just all over our world. So anyway, back to me when I was recording this video. When you could use nice bags that pack more stuff, that don't spill, that keep your food fresh and you can reuse them. It's really a win-win-win if you just go for reusable bags. One of the best things you can do with these is just keep them in that little pouch behind your driver's seat so when you get out to go inside the grocery store, you grab your bags and you're off to the races. So there you go. There are three easy ways to get started on thinking green and becoming an eco-geek. The idea behind this video came from a quote that a lot of us have seen. It gets passed around the internet. It's probably the number one green thinking quote, but basically it's this. We don't need a few people living zero waste lives perfectly. We need millions of people doing it imperfectly. So eco geeks, get started, do your best, find ways to love this planet, to save yourself money and to live more sustainable lives. I always encourage everybody to think creatively and I think this is one of those places that creativity shines so brightly and I just love that. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. If you have tips that I left out that you would just love to share with this community, Throw them down in the comments section. Let's chat down there. And as always, eco geeks, stay creative. Hydrate so you don't dehydrate, you know?